call the meeting to order. I want to welcome everybody here. Glad we've got such a good turnout. Um, for the record, this is the North City School District Board of Education regular meeting being held at the Roosevelt Administrative Offices on the news at 6.30 p.m. February 8, 2016. Jeff, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Blowers? Here. Mr. Carr? Here. Ms. Nickham? Here. Mr. Weber? Here. Mr. Blind? Here. And with that, if we'll all stand, Mr. Carr will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just Warren's grandson. <laughs> We're going to go off the agenda here for just a couple minutes. Uh, a couple hellos we want to get in. Um, as most people know, Kurt Harden left the board as of the end of December. We had a long line of people waiting to take his position. Uh, it consisted of Warren Weber. That was our long line. And we're lucky we don't have a long line, obviously. And in Warren, we've got somebody that's got a lot of experience in the community, both employment and through volunteer. And we're just really lucky to get this type of person to serve on the board. And with that, Warren needs to be sworn in. So he's official. Right. Yes. I, Warren Weber, do solemnly swear. I, Warren Weber, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And, I, and that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge my duties as a member of the Board of Education. Discharge my duties as a member of the Board of Education. Of the Newark City School District, Lincoln County, Ohio. City School District, Lincoln County, Ohio. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And in accordance with the laws now in effect. And in accordance with the laws now in effect. And hereafter to be enacted. And hereafter to be enacted. During my continuance in said office. During my, during my continuance in said office. And until my successor is elected and qualified. And until my successor is elected and qualified. Welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. kids in education and uh, you know, I've got two kids that graduated from Newark High School, one is sitting in the audience. I've got a grandson that's in Newark High School and I have a, another grandson uh, in a couple of years. Uh, it'll be his turn. So uh, I've lived all over the world uh, and education has always been a uh, major part of my life. So thank you. And my wife. <laughs> Camera time. Yes. <laughs> uh, we've lived in a lot of places. Uh, lived in Europe for 10 years. We lived in Idaho, North Dakota. And, uh, you know, we've always been involved with our kids and in the school system. And so we uh, just want to kind of care about them. Thank you. Um, another thing off the agenda we're going to take care of here real quick because uh, we've got somebody needing to leave. As most of us know, Linda Altpeter, who's been our food service manager for years and years, um, is retiring at the end of this month. And to put this in perspective, and I just scared our uh, person here, I think a few minutes ago when I put it this way, between breakfast and lunch, we serve over 6,000 meals a day. If you multiply that out by 180 days, that's over a million meals a year our food service provides. And anytime you're talking a million anything, that's pretty impressive. 
And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Doug. Well, we're very fortunate to uh, have Don Davis. Don, if you please just stand for a second, please. And I'm going to talk a, a few minutes about you. Don is a registered dietitian. He works for the state of Ohio, the Board of uh, Dietetics. And uh, Don's wife works at the Ohio Department of Education uh, and actually does our audit who probably will not be doing our audit officially. <laughs> not anymore. But Yeah, not anymore, but unofficially she'll be doing our audit every day maybe. Uh, it's a great resource to have. Uh, Don comes uh, uh, highly recommended by uh, references that we checked and, and he's got a tremendous background and, and he knows that he's taken over for uh, Linda who spent 29 years uh, in that department and has done a fantastic job. Our food service department is awesome. And so uh, Don's going to step in there and, and lead that. And, and so, Don, welcome. We're excited to have you. So, uh, uh, with that, I recommend that uh, the Board of Education uh, hire Don Davis as our food service director. Do you have a motion? So Second. Discussion, questions? Okay, call the roll, please, Jeff. Just for clarification, we're doing item 3A3 on the addendum which is actually two contracts, one beginning from 442.16 through 731.16, and then again for 812.16 for a two-year contract. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Ms. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Bly? Yes. Thank you. Welcome, Don. Welcome, Don. Welcome. Uh, do we have any resolutions or recognitions? No, we just have a presentation. Okay. Um, a lot of districts anymore are doing state of the district presentations at the beginning of each year. And Doug and I talked, and we've got a lot of things coming up this year. And we thought rather than presenting where we are today, Doug would do a presentation talking about some of the changes, some of the improvements some of the challenges, just some things we're going to have going on in New York City Schools here in 2016. So, uh, that, Doug, we're, going we're going to begin our presentation, my presentation and I, uh, with a presentation from some of our students. This is a snapshot of some of the things they've been uh, working on. So I'm going to turn it over to Maura and we're going to ask the board. We will, uh, Maura, do you want them back? Um, yeah, we have, back we can do either way you want. Yeah, well, are, are they going to present back in the back? We had one young lady who has the um, visual that she can present right from the podium, and okay. then the rest of it will be from the back. Why don't we do the young lady first? Okay. And, so. That would be my student from Wilson. Yeah, we'll just stay put here, and then we'll, we'll, the other students will go in the back. And As these students come forward, the uh, manner, are they smart, uh, present well, and really excited about uh, what they're doing uh, at their schools right now. And uh, so... I know I've been excited since I watched the presentation right after uh, Christmas. So we've got a young lady who is going to talk a little bit about her project, a robotic arm. That her dedication with this is that she, uh, she went home uh, even after the project and continued it on because she was so excited about that. I didn't steal your thunder with that. You didn't, you didn't bring that up. So okay. She, she would prefer not to use the microphone. microphone. Um, she said she could project her voice. Is that okay with you guys? Okay, just wasn't sure if you needed it for that. Okay. Um, my name is Ariana Wimbush. I'm an eighth grader at Wilson Middle School, and I'm in Ms. Martin's pre engineering class. And one of our projects at the beginning of the year was to create um, a robot arm that can pick up a cup. And so my group did have this design. And originally, we were only allowed to use tape, cardboard, um, the little brass clips, fishing line, and that's really about it. And so with our group, this is what we came up with, but like the sheet said, I took mine home and modified it um, up until last night I was working on it. So what you do is you like basically like just put your arm in here, and then the keychains allow you to put your fingers in here, and each finger controls a different finger on the arm, like so, and you can move the different fingers. And it was able to pick a cup, a little styrofoam cup up that was full of water. And that's really cool. Yeah. But 
it was a really interesting project and we got to learn a lot, especially like learning how to work together and make things with limited materials. So it was a very good project. I think that that's the challenge that I saw some of you. That limited materials and, and they make things and, and they work together as a team and, and problem solve and support <coughs> each other. And Ariana you did a, a wonderful job. Uh, again, uh, it took her longer than two minutes to do this project. This is a snapshot of some things. Uh, and you did a very good job of, uh, of simplifying your project. It was much harder than what you're you portrayed it. Uh, a lot of challenges. What were some of those challenges? Um, originally, these are um, actually broken twistable crayons from my brother's school supplies that I took from him. Um, <laughs> and so getting the string to actually control each individual part of the finger, because originally it was bending flat and wasn't able to wrap itself around the actual cup. So trying to use the tape and trying to get it to do that was one of the challenges. And originally, instead of fishing line, we had used um, twine, and that was just, with the tape, it was proven to be messy, and the tape was sticking to it and pulling out the different fibers and the actual twine. So that proved to be challenging. And just getting some of the um, materials to stay. Originally, we were planning on super gluing this on here, but when we found out we were only allowed to use tape to bind the materials together, we had to figure out a way to do some of these. But well, when I took it home, I super glued it. I took it very off and did what I, we, our original plan was to do. That's basically it, to sum it up. Yep. Good, thank you. That's, uh, as Morris that's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's what our, our students are working on. So uh, we'll, we'll ask the board then uh, to turn around and, and before we go to the back of the room, um, we have uh, Wilson Heritage and Liberty, uh, just our middle schools, uh, represented tonight here. So I want to thank the parents uh, for their time uh, to, to come in tonight and also the staff members who uh, are in attendance tonight and I know uh, you know uh, our, not only our students are fired up about this, our staff is really fired up about that. Kim Hudson, I haven't seen her stop smiling in, in the last year back there from Heritage, but uh, good stuff going on uh, in our buildings, and, and so I'll ask the board if you would, uh, more do you want to talk about? Well, yeah, um, just what we uh, had the students um, do, and uh, thank you to all the staff members that are here as well. I appreciate all the time that you put into this. Uh, Wilson, um, actually, I'm excuse me, Liberty and Heritage both have teams that are both going to talk about what they've done in their participation in robotics while there's a demonstration also. Okay, so kids are going to talk about their experience, what they've learned, but also give you a little sampling of what they do with the robots when they compete and when they're learning about the project overall in general. Okay, so that's the plan. So with that, the board is in the back to lead the board to go to the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with Lego Robotics, there's three main points to Lego, or three different tasks in Lego Robotics. You have your um, research project, your teamwork, and your um, robot, your robotic challenge. Um, so our um, research project this year was, well, the theme overall was Trash Trek, and then, um, so when your research project, you need to research and come up with an innovative idea to kind of, how to help prevent um, the waste of trash, and so, um, I know our team came up with an idea of um, upcycling the trash into making a um, sort of planter or a garden. And then um, in the robot games, your robot has to complete the different missions on the board, such as pushing the truck along the rail, which will then drop the um, crate down and bring it all the way to the end and dropping it off at the end. And there's different points for each mission based on the difficulty of the mission. And it's based on whoever gets the most points or whatever team gets the most points wins, wins the, that, that part of the competition. And, so, and then there's the core values part. And, and that, the teams were given certain challenges that they had to complete by working together. And they were scored on well, if they completed the challenge and how well they worked together. It's all about teamwork. 
Um, one thing that I really learned through this year with Flaker Robotics was um, doing multiple things at once and more of a multitasking. Um, we put a lot of our we put a lot of missions into different programs, so we didn't have to run multiple different programs. We only had to run maybe two or three, and um, completing things all at once. Um, that was one of the key points for me. Because you only have two minutes, two minutes and thirty seconds, and then you're done. One of the main things I learned was teamwork. Because without teamwork, you couldn't do anything. Because you wouldn't be able to get a good core value score, which you then wouldn't be able to advance. And you need good teamwork to be able to build the robot and do the research project. All right. So we have multiple teams here. So um, why don't you guys introduce yourself with your names? Of course, our school and what team you were on. And of course, we have more teams over here. Um, we were all from Liberty, and it's there, we have two teams here, me and uh, Luke here. We were the, the Leopard Bears, and yeah. I'm Noel, and this is Drew. We were part of Technologic. Most of our team isn't here, but it's just us two right now. <laughs> we had five people on our team, and they had uh, seven, eight, 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 yeah. Yeah. We're the destroyers. Um, during the competition, we were team eighteen point three seven, and we originally had six people here. But I'm Cora. I'm Natasha, and I'm Brooklyn. And we were here to present our robot. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gentlemen finished? Uh, awesome yeah. job. So this is our robot. We just went with a basic simple design because we're a first year team. But we have a lot of different attachments to put onto it. Um, we, um, we have a Mindstorm profile on our computer and with that we code our missions and uh, I'm the programmer and what I do is that I is I do a guess and check and I do it over and over and over again I run the robot over and over again to make sure everything's correct and accurate and we just um, so we just came up with simple files and um, <coughs> did uh, three to four months of coding before our first practice tournament. And um, we, we decided what we wanted to do after that and we coded more missions so we could get more points for um, the real tournament. And so we um, we uh, tried our hardest, and we um, used our knowledge to help make this robot run its missions. Okay. And then the missions that we like to try to run is we try to knock the tower over with one of our bigger um, attachments. And then we pull the antiques back to base. And then we do the composter. We hit the button on it. And then we collect it to after the compost falls out. Um, and then we go through and do the truck. And we bring it all the way down until it gets that. And then pull it all the way over. And we do the people. And we push it out into this spot right here. And then we collect the turtle in the plastic bag. And we take that back to safety. We stack up the turtle, the octopus, and the chicken, and bring them all out to this circle right here. This is our uh, compost mission. So what we, like Brooklyn said, we hit the button. But we did two missions in this one, so we hit the button, we come back, and we got it.
that was for both of our missions, the composter, co and collect, and our turtle and plastic bag. Our next mission we're going to do is truck, and we basically took two wheels so we could line up against the wall and have a perfect, um, and just line up perfectly so it could come back easily. As you see, the students are allowed to uh, use attachments and touch the robot while it's in home base. It's in the base area. Um, there's points deducted if they have to touch the robot out in the rest of the field. This is our people, so we take um, these little guys there is, uh, to the sorter, and it must be within the white lines. what we were going to do that day and we would split up into two teams and uh, we would have each team do indivisible, indivisible di different things so we can get more accomplished. Now your teamwork being used an awful lot, okay, and that has to be the most difficult part of this project. How do you do it? Well, well, uh, we, well, all of us have a different part, and we have two who handle the robot, and one who builds the attachments, and we've had some prototypes, and um, this one, we use, we want to use for the people, and we would just clean them, but then we did notice that it it was against the rules to flee them, so we went with um, we went with the cage to um, drive them over there. So. And um, we also we also um, went 
we don't argue very much, but when we do, <laughs> which is probably the hardest part, when we do argue, we make sure it doesn't go to extreme levels. <laughs> and, uh, and we like just work it out and if that and if that person who's arguing wants to take a break from the group, they could take a break for a while and then when they're ready they can come back. Do you have like a team leader? Yeah, that's, um, that's her because <laughs> she's been doing it since fourth grade. So okay. Kind of, so she you has... win the arguments? <laughs> <laughs> Thank all you guys for coming. And I, they talk about teamwork. Um, in order, because the competition portion of robotics is done, it literally took all three buildings to make sure we had all the components for this presentation here today. And and that comes from the fact that all the teachers, I'm going to put Rebecca, Ms. Holly over there as well, um, all, I mean, because it's, it's our three middle schools, and, and we try to make sure that we have consistency and opportunities for our kids in all three schools, you know, because that, that's important for us as we grow our students, you know, up for the high school. Uh, in that regard, but it, if it weren't for these folks standing here, our kids wouldn't have the opportunities that they have to be successful in all portions of it, whether it's in competition, whether learning that teamwork and cooperation. So I just want to introduce those folks that are here. We have Rebecca Holloway, who is from Liberty Middle School, David Clark from Liberty Middle School, Ashley Schultz from Heritage Middle School, Megan Martin from Wilson Middle School, and Kim Hudson from <coughs> Heritage Middle School. These folks put a lot of time and, and so I appreciate that fact and the fact that you're willing to do that and the fact that you help our kids grow as much as you do. So thank you. Again, students, thank you. Uh, that's awesome uh, to see. And, and those arguments right now are just like organized discussions. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. and, uh, Again, uh, we have a, a great group of leaders leading our students in our, in our buildings, and, and uh, so we appreciate our staff what you're doing. I don't want to leave more out here because we have a great leader leading that group of leaders. That uh, and more I hit on that uh, the big uh, thing, the consistency uh, among buildings in our district. What what Heritage is doing, we want Liberty and Wilson to do, and, and I think they're learning from each other. Uh, a lot, and, and uh, which creates a great situation for our students. So uh, that's a little bit different than the Legos I used to do. <laughs> uh, but in any event, uh, just a little. Yeah, a tad. But uh, thanks again. We'll we'll give you. Uh, I'm assuming that a lot of you'd like to get home because the Cleveland Cavaliers play at seven. <laughs> yeah, so we'll let you go ahead and. Uh, but we have a varsity girls team, a varsity boys team, and the girls who want to turn them all hiring, which one All right, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of try to stay out of your way, but just, <clears throat> just have a few slides tonight to talk about uh, why it's a great time to be a cat, where we're at in the district, what we're planning. Uh, with some of this, and I had the students come in just to, to demonstrate a little bit about uh, their excitement, and you can see their excitement, and the staff's excitement, and the challenge uh, that we have, uh, and, and kind of where we're at uh, uh, in our district, and, and I think the first thing we have to recognize, because uh, you got to hit the right button uh, that way, but uh, to do these kind of things, to change and add programs and, and those type of things. We have to be in sound financial uh, condition in our school district. And, and I put some things up there, and, and Jeff can chime in if I, if I need to add something, Jeff, or say something. I had Jeff work with these, and, and we know that, uh, and we appreciate what Jeff does for our district and working with us so that we're able to do these kind of things for our students. So uh, New York City Schools five-year forecast is in the black through the year 2020. Uh, through refinancing of bonds, and this is something that we haven't talked a whole lot about that's very important to a homeowner, a property owner in our district. Uh, through Jeff's leadership, uh, we refinanced the bonds for our building project, for the, and the district saved taxpayers over $5.7 million. The savings taxpayers will experience at the end of a 24-year commitment. That's to build our buildings. And so uh, we don't have the exact amount of months, but it will reduce 
uh, the, the 2004 bond issue that was passed uh, by saving that, that uh, the $5.7 million, that will save our homeowners, uh, property owners, uh, in tax money, uh, tax payments. Uh, and I don't want to say in tw you know, instead of 24, it'll be, but it'll be less than the 24 years, which uh, uh, we've had some uh, uh, great opportunities to do that. And I think it's the third time now that we've done that. Am I correct, Jeff? The fourth time that well, we've done that. This one coming up is four, uh, and, it, and it does save that. So that's important to point out to our community. And improved programs and performance while not asking the voters for any additional funds since 2009. So uh, my point is that we've, we've been able to do some things and change and, and put some programs in, and we've done it uh, pretty much in a cost-neutral uh, manner uh, throughout the district uh, since 2009, since the last time that the voters were asked to approve new money. And so again, we keep pointing out it is February of 2016 in our district. And our five-year forecast remains in the black through 2020, with a huge asterisk saying, unless school funding would change any from the state of Ohio, which I do not anticipate it doing. Uh, so again, thanks to Jeff and the board for um, uh, their uh, wonderful work with our financial planning. So some of our programs that we focused on uh, recently, I know this is my seventh year in the district that we've really focused on is our gradual graduation rate focus here and uh, we've we've raised that up to the mid 80s uh, in the last uh, 10 or so years you know ten, eight, nine years ago it was in the 60s and so we're up there and then more is uh, working on this information for us because we like to update this if you're a student in a Newark City School District for five or more years we have a greater than 92 percent graduation rate and I think that's always important to point out and we'll get that exact figure uh, we just don't have that information right now but we'll, we'll have it for you so uh, really focusing in on that uh, Mr. Bowen our high school principal is in the process now we have a meeting next month of kind of uh, reorganizing that committee because we've had a lot of community support and so we're ready to, ready to jump the next hurdle with the graduation uh, rate committee and so uh, good things are happening there we appreciate our community support not only from our parents and our community but from the uh, social agencies and the, and the businesses here in our, in our school district nutritional programs for students talking about lunch breakfast weekend and summer Tom pointed out uh, that we serve over a million mil meals a year and one alarming fact that we found out last year is that we were feeding about 16 to 1700 breakfasts a, a day in our district but a key to that is about 70 percent of our students over 70 percent of our students who were eligible to eat breakfast were not eating breakfast for some reason or another most of it logistical getting to school late those type of things and so the neat thing we have going on right now is Dina Cable over at Ben Franklin Elementary School has piloted a program that we started after uh, Christmas. I was over there one day last week and about 86% of the students ate breakfast in that building. One of the things we're charting is the number of visits to the clinic by students uh, and that has dramatically went down at Ben Franklin. And so we have uh, upwards of, of uh, mid 80 percent eating. There was one day last week that about six students did not eat out of 340 some students in that building. And so Dean is piloting that. We're working out the kinks that will move across the district and the other six elementaries, the three middle schools, and we'll find a way to do it at the high school also. So that 1,600 breakfasts and uh, 6,000, 6,500 meals a day that we're doing now will go up significantly uh, from from that standpoint which is great um, it's not it's a grab-and-go so it's not uh, steak and eggs uh, off the grill or pancakes uh, but it's a grab-and-go but it is it is uh, working and, and we're very happy to, to uh, let you know that we're excited about it and more students will have a chance to eat our weekend program which was started at Carson they are up to 70 
students on the weekends, getting a uh, book, uh, book bag of uh, food to take home for the weekend, and I'll give some credit to Sarah Burles, who was the principal there who retired last year, has put that on mission, and some community members. The food pantry obviously has been great with that. We have some buildings that are doing that now, that are just starting out, that are doing 15 to 20 for a weekend, and we're going to try to really work on that uh, so that our students have, a, have some food on the weekends. And, and don't go hungry. And of course our summer, we're always looking at, at summer uh, ways to help our community feed students in the summertime. And, and so uh, the nutritional programs uh, that are going on are, you know, keep increasing. And that's a challenge for us to make sure our kids have, have something to eat. Uh, hiring and training of excellent staff. And we're, we're talking uh, more, Barb, Mindy, uh, Dave, our cabinet, we talk about uh, not only hiring the best staff out there, uh, we look for way above average. We don't want to hire average people, and uh, we think we're well beyond that. So we're hiring some really good people, but once we have them, we also have a tremendous training program with our mentorship program, and I, I think that's important to point out. Maintaining our facilities. Yes, we have new, beautiful facilities here, uh, and with Dave Altapeter's leadership, I think when you drive by them, they look nice. They're still well maintained. We appreciate what the community has done for our school district and our students. So we want those buildings looking nice. And um, you know, something that gets me sometimes: those old boilers we used to have to use for heating. Those things lasted. Some of them are still going for 67 years. And we've already started replacing some of the controls on our in our new buildings. Uh, that way, and, and that's not cheap. And so we have a rotation, and uh, Dave and, and Larry Williams have worked on that. So we're maintaining our facilities, we're taking care of our facilities so they last longer for our community. And then, as we know, we did seven elementary, three middle schools, and a high school, along with the building that we're in now because of the savings that we had. Some of the money at Whitefield <coughs> is from our building project. Some of the the board's money that, that was dedicated to Whitefield is uh, from the building uh, just under $300,000 of the money we're using down there. Still, it's from the savings on our project, which is uh, neat to point out. We, we kind of look at Whitefield as, as that tail end of, of, the, of the building project that began in 2004. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, we uh, know the advocate did a really nice story an informational story for our community over the weekend uh, on the projects down there and and uh, hopefully I know Robertson went on site today uh, began their work underneath the bleachers uh, they were planning on starting today and I'm hopeful uh, within the next month three houses will be leveled out front and we can you know start our our process of of the parking lot there so Kind of a look into the future on some things we're really looking at is communication uh, with our community and and Seth and I have had a lot of conversations about how we're communicating with our community how our community wants the information and we're actually doing it quarterly so we're logging some things and looking at how many hits some of our our articles have and our we had 17,000 hits on our end of quarter on a Facebook 17,000 on, on principals in the quarter, uh, all A's, and, and uh, what else was Academic awards. Academic awards. Uh, and so we thought those are some of the kind of things we're trying on Facebook. And so, uh, you know, we, we know that we need to have, um, you know, some of our information out there on Facebook because that's where some of our people are going to get that. We have 6,500 students, and we had 17,000 hits on that from different people. So, you know, number one, it's an important to know that people want to know how well our students are doing, parents and community members, and uh, number two, uh, that's awesome to see. That's a huge interest in, in that. So, as part of our communication, uh, we'll be reporting back to the board uh, quarterly and then semi-annual and yearly, and keeping track of, of those type of things and, and uh, getting our, our communication out to um, our students and staff and parents in our community. Social well-being of our students, big focus for us. We're finding more and more 
that our students uh, come from more challenging environments and that, that number is growing and so you know we had chatted with the board we're going to put a little bit more focus on the middle school age students uh, from a social well-being standpoint and dedicate some staff to to uh, uh, help uh, those situations out and so uh, uh, that's an ever-growing need and a big challenge for us school transitions elementary to middle school middle school to high school most of you know that we started a few years ago a transition program from middle school to high school and one of the big components of that was our freshmen the first day on campus by themselves so they get a feel of the building we can talk to them about um, the way a school day goes talk to them about some leadership things and that's so we start asking the question why don't we do that from elementary to middle school and so that's what we're going to start next year as far as sixth grade, they will be the only students in the building on day one. We will get some seventh and eighth graders to help them uh, with that transition. And I always chuckle uh, at the night before school when I go to a middle school and the parents come in with their students. The biggest challenge we have, Rebecca is a uh, middle school teacher. What's the biggest challenge that we have? I was going to say that same thing. I heard somebody over there say, a parent must have said opening the lockers. And I would all, I would all help out, but that's one of my worst skills in the world is opening the lockers. But we think it's a, a, a real little thing. Well, it's not a little thing to a sixth grader who's coming in there and doing that for the first time. And so uh, I'm sure we'll have something in that transition program about uh, two to the right, circle all around a zero to 17 to the left, uh, something like that. But uh, in any event, uh, that's one little piece of it. But it's all about making our students and families feel comfortable where they're at. Uh, I, I mentioned the other day, we've gotten it right in elementary for a long time because kindergarten, they come, if you'll remember, uh, those parents that have students in there, the, the whole 28 kindergarten students aren't in there the first day. You go in at six at a time or, and you gradually, and I joke because I have a granddaughter who started kindergarten and she was convinced there were six students in her class. And we chuckled because old Belle's going to get a big surprise Monday morning when she goes in and there's a lot more than six in that room. So uh, uh, another thing we're looking at doing, and, and uh, uh, Maura has led a, a charge with our middle school and elementary staffs we're really communicating. We have committees set up for that transition program. And our staffs are working on that right now. One of the things that we'll do um, that, that is very important to me, and I think it will be very beneficial to our students, is that after testing in May, we will take our uh, sixth, some of our seventh grade teachers, and we'll go to that elementary school for a day and we'll do a job switch with the fifth grade teachers and the fourth grade teachers and ask them to go to middle school and the middle school teachers come to the elementary. We're going to do that with our principals just to give our students a familiar face to walk into in August. So uh, I think that's a neat thing that uh, we're going to put in. Again, every little thing we can do to make that child at Wilson Middle School feel comfortable coming out of Cherry Valley or McGuffey. Uh, get some off to a good start in, in middle school. So we're excited about some of those things that, that we have coming there. Talent and gifted, big focus, huge focus on this. Uh, we, we've always done some things for talent and gifted, but we've had a bigger focus on graduation rate and some of those kind of things like that. And so we're finding, and that's why I had the students come in today, that, the robotics and the engineering are just one focus of talent gifted. That's not our talent gifted program, but that's just to show our board, our community, our staff, that uh, that's where our students are coming. And, and I would tell you with this, I'm really excited, I'm very passionate right now about what we're doing because I've, I've often said, does your schedule dictate your building or do the kids and what we should be offering them dictate your schedule. And our students right now are challenging us 
to come up with some of the things that we're doing right now with our, our, our that you saw tonight. Um, that's just a snapshot of what they're doing, and it's just a minute part population of our school that's doing that. Uh, we're we're uh, Rebecca. How many students at, at Liberty are involved? In uh, we have forty three in the pre engineering class. Mm -hmm. About thirty students were in the Lego Robotics program. Mm -hmm. Um, and right now, we have probably about 60 competing in either STEM Fest or the Boeing Pasta Challenge, yeah. getting ready for that competition, STEM competition. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And you magnify that times three because Wilson and Heritage have that same demand in their buildings. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, that's the challenge that we have. And our, I can tell you right now, our high school today is not set up to take that demand on. But it will be tomorrow. Uh, when we, we begin as, as we uh, you, know, you see some of these students coming through and, and that's neat because Mrs. Carr teaches a pre-engineering class at the high school and some of them are freshmen in there and I asked when I walked out of there what are they going to take next year? What, we, what can we offer them? And so it's a, it's a process but we can't just throw a course label in there and tell our staff teach this and so we've begun the process to say we need to dedicate uh, staff members to this cause and that dedication will, will be set up where uh, I will use Liberty since Rebecca's in here and say the two feeder schools in the Liberty are John Clem Elementary and, and Legend Elementary and so we're going to have a staff member who will be working with Liberty Middle School and those two elementary schools to coordinate and be consistent um, on what we're doing across our district in our three middle schools with the elementary and then feeding that into the high school. So currently our talent gifted services, you know, we, we will have next year close to either, we haven't got the 14th course designed yet, but we're talking about it. So we have 13 uh, advanced placement or AP courses at the high school, which uh, is quite a few for a high school. Uh, offered at the high school, and that's kind of the way we did talent gifted, you know, in our in our district that way. So uh, we already touched on some of this, but our middle schools, uh, pre-engineering, accelerate seventh, eighth grade math. Again, uh, talent gifted is just not a robotics, and I like to say that because Bev points that out, and that that's true, that's true. And uh, so robotics, humanity-based programs, project-based learning. And you saw a great example of project-based learning in the back of the room tonight. Uh, those students have learned a lot. Not only, that's one of those things you say, we're more than a school report card. Because they're going to learn some, some things that are on the a, on a, on a test that they'll be taking, the state test. But they're also learning. It doesn't measure on a state test how to be a good teammate. Doesn't, uh, you don't learn on there how to, how to constructively have a discussion. Uh, from that standpoint, and how to problem solve, uh, which is what they're doing and, and working together. I found it interesting last night when they kept talking about Peyton Manning at a Super Bowl and what he wanted to be remembered for. And the first thing on that list was he wanted to be a good teammate. And Barbara stepped out, but <clears throat> that's, that's one of the first things I look for when we, we talk about what kind of staff members are we recruiting here. We want to be a good teammate. Uh, to our to our staff here, and so they're learning how to how to be a good teammate, which is important uh, when you're out uh, in the, in the workforce. So incorporate STEM along with uh, project-based learning in the elementary schools, and that's where we have that dedicated staff member in each middle school reaching out to our, our elementaries, and so um, uh, to do a little bit more project-based learning in our elementaries with this. So you can see tonight, and one of the teams back there, uh, the team from. Heritage was talking about one of the young ladies been doing it since fourth grade, and so uh, and others haven't. And her knowledge was really good, and and they all had great knowledge. But we need to get this down in the elementary school, some some project based learning, and lead that up through and organize our district and lead it up through our district. So uh, neat things. You can tell why we're really excited. That's why I had the students come in. Uh, so. Uh, any questions or comments?
I did that good a job of explaining. I'm feeling that, positive. Thank you. Uh, neat, neat stuff going on in, in the district, and and uh, you know I want to share share with uh, uh, the people in this room. Well, you already know that. I mean, I try to do a a blend a, a blended version of where we're at and some things we've been working on. And I know that we could not do what we're doing in our school district unless we weren't all good teammates uh, and working together. You know, I can't emphasize enough how supportive our Board of Education has been over the seven years that I've been here and continue to be. And not only supportive, uh, some of these ideas and some of these things we're doing, the additional ROTC uh, unit that we have at the high school came from a conversation from Mr. Blind and, and uh, you know Bev with the talent gifted talking about uh, you know don't make it just all robotics and things like that so so we've got a board that uh, looks into the future and more, most importantly one of the things that uh, Warren brought tonight is it's all about kids it's all about the education Warren you left out you're all about the community you've been all over the community for quite a while here and we appreciate that but it is all about the kids and our board of education knows that and it's focused on that and so can't tell you how much we appreciate uh, your uh, vision and work in the district the financial part uh, it takes more than Jeff Anderson to be a leader financially but uh, Jeff is really good with working with uh, our our end of the, the, the district here in terms of supporting things that we want to do and, and uh, being creative ways to finance some things so that we don't go back to the taxpayers uh, for, for new additional dollars. And I, and I always say, 2009, we're in 2016, we're looking at 2020. That doesn't happen in a whole lot of school districts. Uh, and improving the way we're improving with our programs. So I uh, would appreciate that. And then, you know, from my end of it, uh, this way, I know that I, I always talk about uh, Barbara, Mindy, Dave, uh, Mora, uh, about being wonderful leaders. Uh, Amy, sorry, Amy, Seth, I'm looking here at, uh, you know, I'm looking at departments that are constantly improving in our school district with wonderful leaders and our staff. You know, I see Denise sitting over here, and, and uh, we've had a lot of staff members. I, I was talking the other day uh, with some people, and I said, I'm looking back five, six years in our district. And we knew from our buyout, and that seems like it's been 50 years ago, uh, but well, it hasn't been that long ago, where we saved on our buyout by people retiring. And we saved over a seven-year period over $7 million in this district. But the challenge of doing that is replacing good people who are leaving with good young people coming in. And then we had the retirement changes. And this time, the last few years, at this time, we knew of 12 to 15 retirements. I'm not sure that we know of five right now. So the brakes have been put on because of the, everything's kind of caught up that way. But it's been a huge challenge to replace our good people and bring good people into our district that are doing it fantastic. We've got some great young leaders in the school district uh, that we've been bringing in that are very innovative and, and moving forward. So many challenges. Uh, there's challenges ahead, but I can uh, tell you with a lot of confidence, we're ready to meet those challenges, and we're moving forward, and we're excited about it. And I asked for questions before. If you don't give me questions, I will just keep talking. You know that about me. So Seth just told me, to, to Doug, have a seat. So, uh, uh, yeah, we're missing that Cavs game. Yeah, I've got it taped. I'm not worried about it. So uh, in any event, <laughs> yeah. Any of the board want to comment? Oh, thank you, Tom. Yeah, Tom brought up... Uh, uh, Another neat thing going on here that's going to change uh, for our walkers and bike riders and things like that, that they'll be, the, the city will be constructing the uh, bridge across the canal uh, beside Legend and Liberty 
um, this summer. And so we're excited about that. That'll change up, keeps our, our students away from the very busy road uh, out there and we'll be able to, or uh, more students who are able to walk to school out of the, right behind, I think Mr. Anderson said you can cut right through his yard, uh, right back through there. And, and uh, so, uh, um, any, in any event. Quarter toll uh, per day for the school district. Yeah, there you go, a little toll for the school district going through. But uh, that, that'll be a lot, lot different, thanks for, Remind me, that's a neat thing that's, that's going on because we've been waiting for that project now for four or five years, somewhere in there, and, and it's, and it's going to happen. So, uh, good stuff. Yes. All right. the other day that Columbus City spent $61,000 on their State of the District presentation and I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't think Doug spent quite that much giving me all that good information. Zero budget. <laughs> <laughs> Just as worked out. information too, wasn't it? Okay. Uh, I guess we got an offer. Now it's time for communications from the floor. If anyone would like to address the board, please step to the podium, give your name, your address. You have up to five minutes. Treasurer's recommendations, Jeff. Item 2A is approval of board meeting minutes from the January 9, 2016 organizational regular meeting and January 25th, 2016 special meeting. Item 2B is approval of the January 2016 financial statements and payments to vendors. Uh, we earned interest of $7,929.06 in the past month. Our fund balances was general fund was $22,450,000. Bond retirement is a negative $220,000. Permanent improvement is $1,007,000. Building fund is a hundred thousand. Food services one million four hundred thirty thousand. The high school facilities local is one hundred twenty thousand. High school facilities the state share is one million six hundred ten thousand. Insurance funds is three million five hundred seventy thousand. Classroom facilities is two million three hundred thirty thousand. Miscellaneous others four four hundred eighty thousand for a total of thirty two million nine hundred fifty two thousand four hundred sixty one dollars and fifteen cents, which agrees with the bank. Then the uh, item 2C is approval of fiscal year permanent supplemental appropriation. Uh, we had two items on that. Uh, the 300 athletic fund uh, was increased by uh, $12,000 and the 019 target for Carson Grant was $700 that they could receive from the Target department store. Uh, other than that, I would hope that you would accept this report. Have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Okay, call roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Ms. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Superintendent recommendations. Uh, under uh, personnel, I'd like to point out uh, uh, one uh, retirement of a classified staff member, Don McCoy. Who was hired in 1995, so been with the district 21 years, started with Ben Franklin, was there for a year, and went to Miller, and then moved to Legend when that closed as, as an orthoaid. So we appreciate Don's uh, time and service in our district. Uh, would point out under item four, supplemental contracts. Uh, Warren, since you're new, so you're now going to bring it up. Uh, uh, when you look there, uh, our Coaches seem to split a lot of supplementals. So that's where you see the, the third. And I think in track, uh, Tom had, had brought it up uh, that uh, we have uh, Kenny Black and 
Pro White that are working with the high school and middle school. I think uh, also Todd Ware is also doing that same thing. So they split those supplementals up on both ends. And, and uh, so they're going to be busy this spring. So those are the, the uh, supplemental contracts. Salary and position adjustments are, are listed. Most of those are for uh, staff members who have completed um, the required education to, to move across on the uh, salary schedule. Substitutes are on here. And so items one through eight. We have a motion. So moved. Second. No, sir. Discussion? Questions? Um, I would actually set aside Carl Walters to vote separately. Okay. Flowers? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Ms. Nickham? No. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Thank you. Western City uh, are on there again. Uh, you know, most, of, most of the time you see that is for uh, students that we're either responsible for or they're responsible for from a special education standpoint in our districts. Uh, approval of educational service agreement. We do this every year. recommend the Board of Education approve an agreement with the Learning Spectrum for the benefit of educational services for students with autism spectrum disorder or similar diagnosis as shown in the appendix. Item three is a public announcement regarding Part B special education funds, and we're required to list this, and I will just recommend the following announcement be made. The New York City School Special Education Department will soon be applying for Part B grant monies for the 2016-2017 school year. These are federal funds used to support the education of students with disabilities for whom New York City School is financially responsible. Each year, the district collects input from parents, staff, and community members regarding the expenditure of these monies. If you have ideas regarding the use of these funds, please send comments or requests by April 1st, 2016 to Melinda Vaughn via electronic mail at M Vaughn, that's M-V-A-U-G-H-N at LACA, L-A-C-A dot org, or in written form to the Newark City Schools, 621 Mount Vernon Road, Newark, Ohio, 43055. Uh, uh, 3B, out-of-state field trips. We have our eighth grade students going to Washington, D.C. again, March 21st through 24th. 
and our French students going to Paris, France, and Rome, Italy, March 23rd through the 31st. I'd like to, to thank the staffs at the middle school, uh, in particular our, our principals and, and the staff members who are uh, dedicated to make sure our students go to uh, D.C. And I'd also like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Mitchell's uh, that honored this trip uh, in his uh, will. This is the first year we'll be collecting some of the funds that were set aside. And since it's the first year and we didn't get those funds until halfway uh, through this year, um, it's not the full amount, but every little bit helps. So we appreciate what Mr. Mitchell has done for our students. He, Lou was very, very dedicated to make sure our students got a chance to get out of Newark, Ohio and go see another place. And, and uh, so he, he really loved that D.C. trip. A lot of times Lou would fly down and spend some time with the, the students and staff down there. So we appreciate what Mr. Mitchell has set up. And then, of course, uh, the French students, anytime our staff members are, I'm not sure more how many staff members are going uh, to France. Sir, I'm yeah. sorry, I do not know. Okay, yeah. So, but we do appreciate, that's that's a, a great opportunity for students to, to go. So, uh, approval of the school calendar, which has uh, been uh, shared with uh, the unions and, and suggestions made. We try to work through some things. And, uh, so, in any event, uh, items one through three. Motion. I'll second. Questions or discussion? The calendar obviously is by the day, but officially we are. Hours. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, not much has, not anything's changed uh, from that standpoint. But it's being counted by the hours. Hey, Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Uh, item C, substance of gifts, uh, monetary to Hillview Elementary from Amy and Paul Weaver, $120. Um, go ahead and do D if you need to. Um, D is under business accepts, acceptance of bids. I recommend the Board of Education accept the bids for the following project as shown in the appendix. The bus garage parking lot improvement. This is phase three. They started a few years ago uh, replacing that so we didn't have a big financial uh, impact on our district in a one-year time and we made it through the, the three years without you know having major problems up there and so that's item one item two is awarding of bid, bids it's recommended the Board of Education award the bid for bus garage parking lot improvements phase three to Gosnell services from Hebron total of two hundred ten thousand nine hundred thirty two dollars and seventeen cents Discussion or questions? Uh, is Gosnell Services, uh, they've been the ones doing the work all along? No. Uh, we, they, uh, <coughs> I started off with Gosnell, got the first bid the year before last. Uh, then the next one was Layton this last summer. And back to Gosnell this time. And through the bidding process, they right. awarded money themselves and he came out on top twice. So. Okay. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Ms. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Okay, under Board of Education reports and recommendations, do we have a legislative liaison report? Okay, B is intent to adopt board policies. <coughs> My favorite part of the board. It is recommended the Board of Education announce its intent to adopt the following policies as shown in the appendix. An announcement be made that these policies will be available to the board, staff, and public for inspection from February 9, 2016 through March 14, 2016. File 8420, Emergency Evacuation of Schools. File 8452, Automated External Defibrillators. File 8500, Food Service, and File 9211, 
district support organizations. Tom, I would just like to point out that the hardest working board committee, the salt committee, has received <laughs> and does recommend these policy adoptions. <laughs> that salt committee's on the ball, aren't they? Gee, who's on that? They just keep rubbing the salt in the wood. Yes, they do. I can say it apparently quite humble. I really don't see any policy recommendations from any other board committee. Yeah. 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 Welcome, Warren, to the board. Uh, welcome to Don, the learning food service director. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to the kids and the staff that made the presentations uh, this evening. They did an awesome job. Uh, goodbye to Dave and Linda. It's Dave's last board meeting. <laughs> so I'm sad. I miss Dave. I will miss Dave. Yeah. Hi. I was going to say everything she just said, so I will save you time and thank you. I was thrilled to see the students. Um, Dave, don't change your cell phone number when you leave. <laughs> uh, my guess is there's going to be a question or two. And I don't care how smart the new fella is, he's going to have to ask you some stuff. And my guess is they're going to be a wonderful person. Though. But, um, but really, uh, the, my thought is the students were, were this, we've got great students in our district. We've got wonderful things going on. Um, but we've got great teachers and uh, quality folks who are unselfish. They give their time, they give their resources, uh, they, they care for the students, and, uh, and, they, and you can see that in the lives of, of those uh, children as they come here. And, and they're proud to di display their efforts and things. And so um, just a, really a big thanks to the teachers as, uh, as it's in that period of time where it's uh, long, winter, and you're at school, and it's dark, and um, hang in there, teachers. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Don't have anything to say, but I'm out here. Are we? As always, just happy to be a cat. I'll let uh, Tom talk about Dave a little bit, because I'm sure he's going to, but... Uh, Mr. Peter, I'll just share this with you. Um, I've, I've been very fortunate to uh, be able to place some people in some roles in the district that they're just been awesome leaders in their departments and teachers and those kind of things. And uh, boy, I didn't have an opportunity to place you in your position, but by golly, I would have. Uh, from there, and I appreciate uh, watching you and everything that. Uh, we learned, and then I would I would mention that because of the retirement laws, we're not allowed to call Dave for two months. Or, <laughs> but uh, actually, actually, I checked that out. Oh, did you? As long as you don't pay me any money, you can call me anytime. Well, you got to worry about that, Dave. <laughs> we're set. Oh, okay. Well, then we're we're free. Call me anytime you yeah. need, no charge. But. Uh, Again, uh, thank you to the students who came in. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I wasn't planning on paying you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Started right now. Started right now. Yeah, right now yeah. uh, great time in our district, and it is a great time to be a cat. Yeah, with Dave leaving, I think I've been here seven of the last nine years, and other than when he had some health problems, it's like, Dave's here. <laughs> you know, that's, you're going to have to make a cardboard cutout of yourself <laughs> and put it there or something. And, you know, ditto what everybody else has said, but I also want to remind folks that we're sitting in this building because the construction program came in under cost. And a big part of that was the leadership from within the district. And Dave was the leader, so. Thank you. Um, again, I'm not going to re reiterate everything. I'm going to 
much as I said, I want to thank Doug for his presentation, especially since I asked him to do it. Um, there's just so many neat things going on in the district that, you know, just felt it was time to just get them all out there. Um, one thing, it's sort of old news now, but uh, when the Danville officer Cottrell was killed and the services and the calling hours are here in town, how well the whole community sort of came together and made that work. You know, I think the community needs kudos for what they did. And one thing, Doug talked to the fellow over at OSU University of DC, and I don't think many people know the district um, offered up parking at Evans Field and I believe it was one school bus and to shuttle people back and forth for the funeral. So we felt that the community gives so much to the school district that when we had the opportunity to give back that it was imperative we do so. Um, thanks to the students. Welcome Ward, welcome Don. Um, and with that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. We're adjourned at 7.51. Uh, <coughs>